Hello friends and welcome to another one of our virtual field trips. Uh, my name is Chris and we're here at the Gristmill and Gardens in Karameas. It is a beautiful, beautiful afternoon. Uh, you can see the Similkameen Valley around me. I'm up in our garden today. Uh, and honestly, I was really excited by what I found just a few minutes ago. It turns out that uh, we have some very, very busy little creatures right now. So I'm going to go over here to this uh, apricot tree that's just starting to bloom. Take a little look. There are, we got to wait to catch them, but there are bees everywhere right now. And judging by the look of them, they're all honeybees. Somebody has a hive nearby and these guys have woken up and have decided it's time to start getting honey. Now they're not actually particularly interested in me. They are much more interested in all of the, in all the nectar and all of the uh, early season pollen that they can get for their hive. I would guess right now, looking at this tree, the tree behind me, even though it's not even fully in bloom yet, there's probably hundreds and hundreds of bees in it right now. And they really don't care much about me. They don't, they're not paying me any attention. Let's see if we can capture any more of them. Uh, seem to be a little camera shy, but that's okay. I'll try and get a few close-ups of them now. Our busy little bees are really active, as you can see, gathering pollen and uh, nectar. Now it amazes me that each of these little bees on their own only produces about a twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. Meanwhile, as a whole hive, they can produce as much as 400 pounds or even more. That's a whole lot of work for busy little bees. Now these bees, are doing more than just pollinating my apricot tree. They are working their way around the whole valley, pollinating lots of different plants and crops. In fact, almost 80% of all crops that we grow require some involvement from bees somewhere along the lines. Farmers will hire beekeepers to place hives in their orchards and on their farms so that those bees can do their pollination work. They come and go, and while they're uh, doing that pollination work, obviously they're building up a store of honey by putting it inside the honeycomb and then capping it off. Now beekeepers will open up these hives every once in a while to check on the health of the bees. And eventually they'll remove some of the frames and remove the, the cap of wax on each of the cells so that they can remove the honey and sell it as well. Now what we're seeing in this tree today are honeybees, and those are domesticated, but there's also lots of other wild flying creatures that are similar. Uh, bumblebees, for example, wasps, hornets, and uh, of course, mason bees. Now, in fact, there are more than 20,000 different species of wild bee out there, and many more wasps and hornets and hoverflies and other animals that are similar. In the end, though, it's just amazing how much work these little guys do. Each one is so busy doing its own thing, checking out all of these flowers. It's really impressive. Such a little creature can uh, be so busy. Busy like a bee. What a beautiful day. Well, it's pretty amazing, isn't it, all that activity? I think one of the things that I like most about seeing that is that I know that those bees are moving pollen around between all those flowers and helping make sure that those flowers turn into fruit this year. So with a little luck, there should be a lot of apricots on this tree. And on top of that, these bees are also taking some of that uh, nectar away and using it to make honey. So really, they're doing two jobs for the price of one, giving us good pollination, and giving us some really, really delicious honey. 
Anyways, thank you so much for joining us on today's virtual field trip. It really is an absolutely spectacular day here in the Similkameen Valley. And uh, hopefully when this is all over, you can come out and visit us. It'd be really wonderful to have you here, show you these things in person. If this is your first time watching, please go check out our website at www.oldgristmill.ca and learn a little bit more about us. If uh, you've watched a bunch of these before and you can afford it, please consider supporting us by visiting our website, clicking on the support button and buying yourself a season's pass. I know that it's unlikely that we're going to be open for a regular season or anything like a regular season this year, but we still have bills to pay and the money you put in towards your season's pass right now really helps us pay the bills. So thank you. Anyways, this is me signing off. I'm Chris and uh, we'll see you next time here on our virtual field trips at the Grist Mill. Bye-bye now.